All right, everybody, Mr. Deadman of the Dead Man Stone Podcast here, a live show every Monday, Wednesday, Friday nights at 9.30. We need to talk about Nicholas Passione. If you're new to this, who is he? Nicholas Passione is something of a lol cow. Uh, he is something of a troll. He lurks about looking for, I want to say victims, or really, uh, they are kind of targets. He, he goes about and makes a list of people to go to, go towards and confront, attack, or try to associate with um, he still name drops my name, first and last, and Dead Man's Tome, as if we're some sort of buddy, buddy, but we're not. I, what it is, is I showed kindness to him by just being a host, as hosts are, are supposed to do, at least I would think, at least, you know, have a good show anyway. Uh, so he was on the show and he talked, but let's dig deeper into this guy. Let's really understand who Nicholas Passione is. And I think to do so, we have to look at how he addresses plagiarism and character assassination. This guy, Nicholas Passione, will accuse you of being a, a plagiarist. Um, there's some other form. What does he call it? he probably say it here. Um, it's just, it just baffles me. It just baffles me. Anyway. And I warn you, you'll probably not understand anything he's about to say. And I'll have the closed caption on. By the way, I haven't read any of this. Uh, who puts text in the beginning of their videos? Oh man, it already has profanity. Look at that. Uh, let's see. This teleprompter might be too fast for me. I'm on a record about a number of things, my memoir and everyone twisting my words around. Um, stinky cat on Twitter, fucking liar. I am confronting classmates who associate with plagiarists who practice the art of character assassination. When I am trying to go off record and approach her like a human being, pointing out that or what Robert Bopatter did with a uh, Stegen dealer, Plagiarism is not welcome in this business and those who encourage it. If you are an author who stifled me and called the people who plagiarized me your friend, it's time to go. You're out of the business as I'm coming for you on that one. Oh, I know what he's talking about. I think he's talking. Is he talking about this? Is he talking about this book here? Fossil Lake? So from what I understand, Nicholas Passione had a... Uh, I guess a publishing business called Fossil Lake Publishing. And here's a book called Fossil Lake. Has nothing to do with the publishing house other than the, the people, a lot, a lot of the people in this book are pissed off at Nicholas Passione for coming at them in such a rude way, being a little dirtbag, being an asshole, calling them all sorts of names, attacking them. This guy, if you reject one of his stories, he attacks you. He calls you all sorts of names just because you reject it. And I have emails to show that. It's crazy. And when he attacks you, it's kind of like, if you ever play it on Xbox Live, and you might run into the, uh, like Halo or Call of Duty or whatever, you might run into the one, one actually <laughs> frequent this often, there's going to be rounds where there'll be 13, 14 year olds spewing out Racial slurs and everything, as if they just learned them, you know? Oh, man. Uh, that's Nicholas Passion, but he's a grown adult, and he does this. He does it. Oh, man. But uh, I think he's talking about this. If so, uh, he, needs, he needs to get over it. Because just Fossil Lake, that's not a trademark term. So you don't own it. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, he gets obsessed with classmates. You notice that by Nicholas Passione. He obsessed with classmates. I don't know what it is. I don't know what he means by that. Like, people that actually went to school with him? Okay. Well, let me just paint a picture here. I don't really know any of the people. I mean, where are they? The people I went to school with are kind of long and gone doing their own thing. I don't fixate on that, and I don't care to. 
You spit in my face with books for you. Do, do, do. All right, now let's get into the video. I'm gonna go on rotten. Why I called him it out? I'm gonna go. I'm gone rotten. Why I called him out? Okay, so <laughs> already it starts out great. Sherry Evans, runaway plagiarist. A runaway plagiarist. Here's so my last video. I have the screen cap on my short story. Well, my, my novella now. Seeing it. He put his byline on a story. You think I'm a liar about this? You saw the screen cap. I don't lie about this sort of thing. I had a deal with David Boyer. A plagiarist. So hit it. Uh, uh, sorry, things I had the only employer a plague ghost. So hit you, you want, wrong people like this? want wrong people like this, I gave a stern, I gave warning. A stern warning. You rolling play girls. I'm going to treat roll you. Like play, you rolling play girls. No, sorry. I misspoke. That would that would be cool. You rolling play girls. I'm going to treat you like, like that. You know, like that. What? I have to I have to break this down and try to understand. Uh, there's a... What? There's a caption here. Being accused of being a bully doesn't ring well with me. This is character assassination. One of the people who did this claimed to be a fucking journalist. I have my Google Plus profile page linked to this one. I don't care about that. So you want to go around and say, I fucking slandered you. I tried to approach a human being. And email the fucking police asshole. Zealots on me. I'm a journalist. He's a journalist. <laughs> and I, I guess anybody can call themselves a journalist. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a journalist. I investigate people. I, I, inve I investigate. I'm a journalist. Investigation, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> Even close captioning knows the truth. I'm, I'm doing my footwork. I'm looking at who they are. I'm trying to find out who they are. Uh -huh. Where they came from. Where they emerged from. To do this kind of shit. Okay. And we think Kat saying she's a fucking journalist. No, she's not. Who are her sources? Who are her legit sources? Name them. It's I don't know. Who are, who are, are they? This is 2014. We don't use screen names anymore. Unless you're doing on a chat room. I mean, you can still use free names. What are you talking about? Name. You could have a, you could have an online persona. You could have Stinky Cat. That's obviously not a real name, unless the her parents hated her or something. Huh? If I have a third kid, I might name her Stinky Cat. That'd be something, huh? Would that be child abuse? Come here, Stinky Cat. Come here. By the way, just to remind you, I believe in the previous video, Nicholas Passione has a kid. Somewhere. I, I think he has a child. Show you a real picture. If you have a blog, use a real name too. If you're an author, use a real name. If you're a libel me on fucking... So what, is he telling, is he saying that he shouldn't be anonymous anymore? If anything, if anything, now in 2019, you should hang on to any, uh, any confidentiality, uh, confidentiality you have. Be anonymous as much as you can, because it's it's like the time is ticking, man. We're running out of time. Eventually, they're gonna make it to where, oh yeah, they're probably gonna link your online profiles to to you, like in a way you can't you can't hide. That day is coming, but a way to avoid trolls like this guy or assholes is to be anonymous. It also prevents you from being targeted. You don't have to worry about your family being harassed. You don't have to worry about... Man, life is so much easier, really. Because you can be whoever you want to be. You're anonymous. And Scrib.com. Saying you're a biographer, you're bullshit. That blog... Actually, the... One for the next one. That's not a fan site. That's a slander blog. Okay, what the freak... For the club, that's not a bad sight. And slanted 
blog. So you want to go so around, go around slandering, slandering me. me? It's a review of who you are, Lee. It's a review of who you I'm are. I'm not hiding. Lee, I'm not hiding. I was trying to promote a lineup on my... I uh, think he has a boyfriend named Lee. I was trying to promote a lineup by my fresh, fresh, what? Okay the creech, my, pro my prostitute, a I'm chef. Huh? <laughs> what? It's going too fast. My prostitute is a chef. Che Cheech, my office. I'm always trying to promote James. What? Huh. Whose partner namesake one? James, what? Whose partner namesake one? James, who? Who is he trying to promote? Some things I've done. I got supporters now. I have flashbacks coming out of the woodwork seeing these support what I do. Okay. So you want to stifle that? What kind of person you are, really? I don't know who supports you, Nicholas Passione. But they probably don't really know much about you. And we're gonna we're gonna go into this, by the way. We're gonna go into this book. The Eternal Gazette. Which you gave me no. No, he didn't give me a copy to review. I had to buy it. But that's going to be money well spent. Because I'm reviewing this thing. And I can tell you, I read some of the stories already. And the stories are alright. But they could have used a better editor. Like, really could have. And one thing, it's a nitpick for me. Like, in endologies, like, look at this. Like, what I'm trying to point out here is that on these two pages, on these two pages, you have the name of the book and the name of the book. But what about the name of the story that you're reading? There's no, there's no way to know what story you're on if you're just flipping through. That's one thing. Like, now with my anthologies, what I try to do is make it where no matter where you are, you know where you are. Anyway. What I see you is, I don't want to smell your heart. It smells like raw sewage. You're a flower good day to me. Damn. Me. That's cold. Nicholas Passione just said someone's heart smells like raw sewage. Too bad I don't know who he's talking about. Like raw sewage, your phone, good air to me, me. Man. I think, uh... I think this is like... Oh my god, this is so broken. This is broken. I, my mind, it, it's hurting. It reminds me of uh, those Nintendo games like uh, a Zelda, Z Zelda 2, or Link, Link's Adventure. Um, the dialogue boxes were broken. They wouldn't read right. You you blow them every few years. You blow you them every like few years. Rag, and you blow us all, all like That's fucking rag course. That's fucking She's cherry. Here was she a flowering together. Uh, is one mouth up. is looking out up Nora's out camp Nora's down. camp. She tore me down. She stifled me. So I did. I confronted her. I exposed her. So lady, I can fire. I exposed before. You see her running, little, running little plate hers on Twitter. It's kind of true like shit. I mean, not attack her sexually. So he's going off about this person who he feels has stifled him and just spewing all sorts of crap. Just spewing crap. I mean, obviously just making shit up about her on the fly. Um, you go at, you nail her where she stands. You nail her where she stands. That sounds like sexual uh, harassment. That sounds like a hostile work environment. That's sexual assault, you sir. Her integrity. You question me. What kind of Christian goes around encouraging people to steal from other writers? Um, maybe they're not Christian. I don't. I don't know. Uh, but even Christians steal. So there's that. Her new friend Robert Pollard put her put his byline on two of my stories. I published all the stories. Okay, hold on. In what evidence does he have to show this? That someone put their byline on his stories. He doesn't have any proof of that. He has no proof of that. What he does is say things like, This is plagiarism because it has the same name. But I read his work. And we're going to read it together. 
oh, no, this series is going to get better as we continue. Um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't put my name on anything he wrote. It's, you know what? Let me, let me give you a sample. Let me give you a sample. A fossil Lake. No, sorry. Wrong one. Not Fossil Lake. My bad. I grabbed the good one. Let me grab the bad one. Uh, let me find his story. His story sticks out like a sore thumb. First off, it's classified as nonfiction. I don't know why. I hope to God this is not true. No, not that I really care, but... Oh, where are you? Where are you? I think it's like the last one. See, this is why it's good to have the title of the story in the book. In the header. That way people know where the fuck they are when they're looking around. Ah. To make your book difficult to navigate, people are just going to drop it. They don't want to deal with it. Where the fuck are you? Are you like the last story for real? Save the best for last. I, I don't know where he's at. Nope. Okay, let me... I swear to God, Nicholas Pastion. Make a better book. It's not just him, too. I mean, there's there's... There's others that do the same thing. Okay, uh, 68. 68? I was way off. Way off. All right. The pattern of diagnosis is what it's called. Pattern of diagnosis. And let me, let me take this fucker off the screen real fast. All right. Pattern of diagnosis by Nicholas A. Passione. And, and okay, here it goes. I want to read this as it's written. Okay. The details from the nightmares often drawn themselves out in my sleep, comma. Sorry, repeat that. The details from the nightmares often drawn themselves out in my sleep. But never really knew how it would play out itself. What? What? But never really knew how it would play itself out. Even when one becomes ill, comma, the dreams that follow form them. I, I'm, I'm having difficulty. I don't know why. Okay. Hold on. Even when one becomes ill, the dreams that follow from them lead one detail into the next. It just seems that the nightmares that followed from receiving the pre prescriptions follow. Uh, okay, did I read that right? It just seems that the nightmares that followed from receiving the prescriptions follow in form of the cruel staff members from one hospital. It seems... That's one paragraph, by the way. Second paragraph. It seems that every hospital seems to be a layout or a plot waiting to be written for a bizarre horror story or two. Period. This is often the case when one is left stranded in the emergency room on a number of occasions. Period. Much as it seemed a few days before Halloween... Comma, everyone is entitled to a scare or two, whether real or imagined. Third paragraph. From the things seen, comma, and the things that are, un that are known from the eyes of the sick, period. You know, is that, is that really... Uh, <laughs> I'm nitpicking now. I should have nitpicked from the beginning. It is often the nightmares that paint into the shadows of all that would be seen in this narrative are later related. What the fuck is he talking about? It is often the nightmares that paint into the shadows of all that would be seen in this narrative are later related. Is he... 
is he trying to write confused like H.P. Lovecraft? Is he trying to just? But it's like he's he's he. I just don't know, man. And it's often the nightmares that paint into the shadows of all that would be seen in this narrative are later related. The things seen in the pattern of nightmares. Man, what the fuck? Do you keep on repeating yourself? The things seen in the pattern of nightmares drawn from the ignorance of the staff of one hospital. The ideas seen within the old horror films of the ignorant be I'm done. I'm done. <sighs> okay. It gets it gets better. Another paragraph. Um uh, Dialogue. You have outstayed your welcome. There's the bus, the public safety said to me as he was pushing me out the door, period. He was taller than me, but didn't look like he was much older either, period. But when he did that, comma, I imagined every Twilight Zone episode being pushed out in middle of nowhere with Hardly anything but my sweats on my back to keep me warm. Okay. The old horror plots. Like, I can't. I can't. I, I don't know, man. You read Nicolas Passion, and, and by the way, this is nonfiction. I don't understand what he's saying. This can't be nonfiction. This is about him, his life. The horror in my eyes came to a head when I remembered something about this, comma. I had a disturbing dream about this when I was going to New Orleans, period. It is strange how one has many macabre dreams when the over-the-counter drugs for cold and flu play into the psyche. Much of the room... Much of the room around me was asleep and the dream played out as a horror film during a darkened theater. Oh my god, stop it. It's hurting me. What is he talking about? What is the pattern of diagnosis? If this is if this is how he gets diagnosed with like PTSD or anxiety or uh Bipolar? What the fuck does he have? I don't know what he has. He has something. He has a problem. Showing the true owner. I wrote Legend Keeper. I wrote Sneaky Joe. So I want to address my former class with this one. Who takes their influences in your high school? You guys are both carried there. Who takes their influences in your high school? What? Man, dude, how old are you? Why are your influences from high school still running your life? Like, what are you talking about? It was a dying sense pattern. Just, it was dying as that thought. I introduced myself saying what I did. They saw my influences. It was, okay, we'll carry it. Sam Kiss was on public library. Carrie Sink is alive? Who's Carrie Sink? Alive Carol. Prescott, Rose Prescott. I told him I lived there from 1976 to 1987. When I realized I said that, they go, okay, we'll carry it too. And with the story of I knew him. I knew him quite well. He was in my homeroom. So he said, I don't know Who's in your homeroom? Home? So I don't know poor Stink? I know we the high you don't know so poor yeah. Stink? Nicholas Passion, I think you know what poor Stink is. I think you know what hubbo Stink is. The real movie's at. Some of my classmates used to work there. I used to be on a tan with them. I used to work my movies over here on staff. So I know. He was too pleased when I wrote Can't Be Homicide. Can't Be Homicide? Man, Hell, Nicholas Passion, I don't know what you're saying. So, like, you so you want to go around lying about me, saying I don't know these people? I did. Oh um, yeah, you know a lot of people. As you love your enemies. And a lot of his far friends, he do quite well. Be a correspondent. And I get to work with some of my close friends in recent years. 
So who are you to say these players don't carry? I saw the <sighs> This is so the guy's trying to defend himself. The same guy that will when he he gets easily enraged and he'll start saying things on social media on Facebook and email and Twitter. He'll say that you know, I hope I hope your school I hope the school where your kids are at get a tornado or something. I hope a t- tornado hits at school. Or he'll um He'll wish death upon your family members. He'll attack you. And it's like... And I know these things have a tendency to go back and forth. You know? You know, when you're slinging mud, you get caught up in it. You all get dirty, you know? But it's like, come on, man. You're gonna, you're gonna pretend like... Like you're some... Saint in all this? <sighs> Nicholas, you know, the path of redemption starts with owning your mistakes. Owning your mistakes. I don't know. I don't know if that path is there for you. I want to believe that every man, every woman is, uh, can be redeemed. If they, they work on it, they work for it. But can a low cow, can someone like this be redeemed for the things he's done? I don't know. And where'd you get the books that were in the picture? They're that way they're not there, okay? I appreciate you fuckers looming good way guys on my books, especially with my own artwork. Oh, his books, his artwork. Did I show you this one already? Sorry. Uh, this, I don't think, is his artwork. But it's much better than his usual artwork. His artwork is... Um, like, how do you describe it? Like, smeared shit on paper? No, it really is. Just Google it. You don't believe me. It's like uh, he takes a picture of himself and puts a few filters on... Throws it through a few filters on Photoshop, and there you go. There's the cover. Um, no. No, you can only get away with that sort of lazy cover work if you're, like, really good and talented. If you're, like, a band, like, typo negative, you can get away with that. But you're not. You're Nicholas Passion. And the solution I got from an agency, you over that. What's the answer? You may never know. When you're not your you may never know when you to become a car. You never know yet become a car? And let me get let me ask this question for some of you who are classmates. I'm not a classmate. Would you go on staff with someone knowing that you grew up with them? And become friends with the people who try to staff with you in the industry? So would you have a problem with a girl that he grew up with who became friends of others to try to stifle you? Well, my question to you is, like, why are they trying to stifle you? Why do you feel like they're trying to stifle you? Um, in what way are they stifling you? Those, are, those three questions need to be answered to really understand where this is coming from. And then I would put it back on, on you and be like, well, let's, let's work on, instead of holding on to that grudge, let's work on why you feel you're being stifled. And maybe there's truth to it. I don't, I don't know the full story. I but I know that uh, you going around calling people names, you going around uh, get all angry because you get rejected, you go around uh, attacking people and wishing death on their family and things. Uh, people aren't going to want to work with you. You can call that stifling all as much as you want. You can call like parody pieces like this stifling all you want. But uh, it's not. I mean, you make your bed, you lie in it. If you don't like the way it's made, change it. Take off the dirty sheets. Clean it up. Get a new bed. What can I tell you? Oh. If you stab with somebody in the industry, and they're your TOC mates. TOC mates. All right. They really understand Nicholas Passion. He's obsessed with classmates and TOC. What is a TOC? 
table of contents. You know, like the other people that you're in the book with. Um, okay. I mean, so you're in the same anthology with some, as someone else. It doesn't really mean you guys are connected in any way other than you're in the same boat. Or you have a story that's in the same book as theirs. Okay. That's about it. Down. Take him out. Take him down a notch. And there's swell, they have swelled heads. Uh, it sounds like you have a swelled up head. Especially if all it takes is to become a TOC mate. Like, hold on, let me, let me show something here real fast. Like, the people in Conspiracy Issue, I don't know if they know each other or if they like one another. And nor do I care. I don't ask that. I don't ask, hey, Benjamin, do you know who Richard is? Do y'all like each other? Huh? Do you have problems? I mean, if one of them came up to me and said, oh, uh, I'll use Bob McNeil because he's, he's a good guy. If someone came to me if, and said, oh, Bob McNeil is, is a terrible human being, which he's not, my response would be, uh, I don't care. <laughs> uh, and I don't believe you. <laughs> he pretty much like that. I mean, if they're like, oh, Bob McNeil is horrible. You need to take him off the, out of the issue. You'd be like, uh, I, don't, I don't do double work. I'm not reworking on it. it. It's done. It's done. I'm not pulling someone out <laughs> just because you don't like him, you know? Oh, shit. But I don't know. But apparently, Nicholas Passion believes if you are in the, in the book with other people, you're like brethren. Okay. Something like that. Their hands are about to fall off there. So think about that for a second. When you look at the video. And we look at my the so, so, safari pages being vandalized by a lie. Penalized? What I say in these videos are true. I can back up what I say. With each of these stories, with the anthologies, with the maze. I didn't steal any stories, okay? What would came with that lie? That was character assassination. I think he meant that to be like knocking out of the ballpark, but no, it just failed miserably. <sighs> Bored me too. Okay. Uh, with that said, I think I'll make these Nicholas Passion episodes every Friday. So look forward to that. All right. Y'all take it easy.